Okay, so before the break, we were chatting with Michael O'Leary and Grant Alexander about their time on Guiding Light and a performance that they have coming up call, at UMES called Breathing Under Dirt. Yeah, so we thought it would be fun to open up the floor to our viewers to see if they have any questions for Michael or Grant. And Sean's over in the audience with some Guiding Light fans. Sean. Yeah, I'm here with Bobby. He's from uh, South Carolina. He came up with his family. And when he walked in this morning, he actually was like, hey, I recognize <laughs> you. So it's kind of funny. And you have a question. Yeah. I was just curious for both of you, I mean, what is it like when you go from uh, taping a show and doing all those many shows during a week and then you transition into like a live performance like a play? What is that? Is that a hard transition? Is it easy? Yeah, you know, I always think about it um, like you're, you've changed uh, a set of clothes. Um, you know, you know, like you walk out in a pair of uh, shorts and a t-shirt and your body feels a certain way and you just have a, a certain kind of quality to you. And then you put a tuxedo on and it's entirely different. You don't really think about it, but you change. Um, when, you're on, when you're on stage, you have to project an entirely different way because you have to reach through the actor that you're working with all the way to the back row. When it's for the camera, you have to go through your actor that you're working with to the camera lens. So the distance is so much more finite. Um, so you can be much more subtle. Your facial expressions make a whole lot uh, more of a statement in terms of what you're doing as an actor. Uh, and on stage, everything has to be larger, but you don't want to be phony. So it's just a, it's a different way of doing things. You have to adapt, yeah. mm -hmm. just like anything else. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got a couple more. We got one more question up here. What's your name? Catherine. All right, Catherine, what's your question? Michael and Grant, what's the greatest challenge you face as an actor? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, besides getting work. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's the honest answer yeah. right there. Keep working. Keep working. You know, that, uh, I think that um, Grant and I have reached this place in our lives that, you know, this is about creating work for ourselves. And that's kind of what this, this play is about because... I, I really still feel that we have the most talented actors uh, out there. Um, we were talking earlier, we do 85, 86 pages a day. And so I know as a playwright, I can ask actors to say, hey guys, come on board, we, we have a limited time schedule, we can get together and we're gonna go, we'll end up having a good, a good show. So Guiding Light, uh, on forever and ever, and, and what was it like when you knew that the end was near for the show? I mean, that had to be frightening. I, it was it was a, a sad thing uh, in it's weird if for, for me at least and I can't speak for you Mikey but it was a little bit like having an older member of your family that you knew was passing away we couldn't be angry or bitter about it because we had been so fortunate mm -hmm. to have this incredibly long run we knew that it was probably going to happen um, and we all wanted to try to handle it with a little bit of grace and gratitude. And I think for the most part, we did. Yeah, I, I remember toward the end of the, uh, with the run, Grant and I had this scene. It was about outside in the basketball court, and mm -hmm. it was one of our last scenes. And um, Grant was, he walked away, and I could just see he was, um, you know, uh, contemplative. And I said, what's going on? He says, Mikey, this is the last time we'll get a chance to do this mm -hmm. again, you know. And, um, you know, his sentimentality was way ahead of mine. It wasn't, it didn't really hit me until after the show was canceled, the, the enormity of, of how much I missed everybody, you know, because th these are really truly family members. And um, there's nothing you can do to quite prepare for that because, you know, 25 years for both of us at least, coming to the same place every day, Go and sit in the same makeup chair and talking to the same people. Yeah, you watch your kids grow up. Mm -hmm. There are deaths, births, oh, wow. weddings, divorces. I mean everything, and you really do it as a family. And it is, but it is the fabric that brings you together. You stay in touch, and Mikey and I have stayed in touch, you know, uh, uh, a lot. But there are the people. It's more the people that were, you know, your, this was the thing that that brought you together. Uh, the crew people. You know, we had such an incredible crew on our show. And we don't see those guys very often. I mean, occasionally we will, you know, run into people or, or, or see people. But uh, we were we were incredibly fortunate. We we really can't be anything but grateful. Yeah, I have to I have to ask you. Yeah, <laughs> I have to ask you. And we were joking around about this in the in the audience. Um, how many times was Philip married? <laughs> you know. It, you, I, I did lose count. Um, I, I thought, for some reason, I thought it was seven. 
Um, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and I, how many kids are out there? Yeah, I mean, how many spouting and, children? Uh, and, and Rick, you weren't, you know. I wasn't a box of chocolates either. <laughs> no. I mean, and then of course, let's uh, he Don't, took no, no, he on. took virtually <laughs> every one of my wives and girlfriends away. It's still every single one. He was it's, such a dog. It's still raw. Yeah. It's still it's raw. Still, yeah, my, it's, I'm not bitter. It started with the prom. It started. It, it started, started like I just was on the on show of the week, and he goes, uh, Rick, you're not going to be with Beth tonight. You're going to be with Mindy. <laughs> not, <laughs> That is not the way it I happened. Never, yeah, I never not the I way came it with somebody and, and then uh, I never went home. It was with a very natural, it. organic thing that yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's interesting you were saying that they that the viewers wanted you to stay friends yeah. with your exes on the show. Actually, well, in an odd way, and this used to drive some of the ladies that we worked with nuts, because you, you internalize, you can't help it, you, you internalize a little bit of what's going on. And every time that we would have one of these situations, the writers sort of knew that the rooting interest of the audience was always that Rick and Philip would, uh, as long as they're still going to be friends, yeah. Yeah. as long as they're going to be friends. Yeah. And the, sometimes the love interest, uh, whoever it might be, would be, oh, uh, well, uh, they, would, they would say, we, are, we, are, we were married and we do have a child and, and we care about this. <laughs> they would come up to me in the elevator and say, um, Rick, R Roxy may be a prostitute and have amnesia, but she loves you, child. <laughs> and and Philip, Philip is going, he's cheating. Now you can still love Philip, right? You can still be friends with Philip. And I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You know. Something tells me we could spend the entire afternoon on this, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah. You've got to have stories beyond compare. We do. We've yeah. got some fun stories. Well, <laughs> we, we, we really appreciate you yes, coming on the show you. today. Thank you for having Looking us. Looking forward to the play coming up in August in the Actors' Workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much.